Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining us today for the first installment in our 2021 Roadmap to Modernization series. I'm James Hansen, the Vice President and Publisher of NextGov, the Federal Technology News and Media Division of Government Executive Media Group. And it is my great pleasure to be here today with Bob Ritchie, uh, the Vice President for Software at SAIC, and Lieutenant Colonel Todd Watson, the Material Leader for the Enterprise Cloud Services Branch, uh, Enterprise Information Technology and Cyber Division, Command, Control, Communications, and Intelligent Directorate, Air Force Lifecycle Management Center at Hanscom Air Force Base for Cloud Adoption Now, presented by our underwriter, SAIC. During today's discussion, we're gonna discuss um, how cloud architecture is critical to digital transformation and how the Air Force's Cloud One program is making that need a reality. Bob, Lieutenant Colonel Watson, thanks again for being with me today. Uh, I'd love if each of you could uh, just introduce yourselves to the audience, tell us about your organizational mission, your role and work as it relates to uh, IT modernization, and then we can uh, get into a little deep dive. So, Lieutenant Colonel Watson, you want to start? Yes, good morning. Yeah, great to be here with you. And uh, as you, uh, you already mentioned here, uh, Todd Watson, uh, Enterprise Cloud Services Branch Chief uh, Material Leader, um, so providing infrastructure really uh, focused on all things cloud, uh, for the Air Force uh, here at Hanscom Air Force Base in Massachusetts. Um, I sit inside of a division that takes care of a number of things related to on-prem, to, to, uh, to cloud uh, enterprise applications, um, but the focus of my branch is very much on cloud services as it, the name implies, and uh, Cloud One is a huge, huge part of that uh, in partnering with uh, the Bob Ritchies of the world and the SAIC folks uh, to make that work. Thank you, sir. Bob? Hi, yes. Uh, as James mentioned, I'm the Vice President of Software uh, at SAIC. And uh, as uh, Lieutenant Colonel Watson mentioned, I, I do get to work. I have uh, the opportunity. I'm fortunate enough to get to work with, with him and uh, uh, the leaders under him uh, at, uh, at Hanscom Air Force Base on Cloud One as the community of practice lead there. And uh, really try and take a hands-on approach uh, in partnership uh, with Cloud One program in democratizing the skill sets necessary for DevSecOps and cloud to really drive that digital transformation uh, for the U.S. Air Force and, and broader DOD. And so let's start with how does secure cloud adoption fit into the broader imperative for modernizing government IT? Uh, and then, you know, follow up, why is that step so important? Lieutenant Colonel Watson, why don't you go ahead and uh, again, start us off? Sure. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I think there are many, many benefits uh, to it. And, you know, the cloud, Air Force cloud strategy, lots of things point to the goodness of the cloud. And uh, we're certainly in this movement of IT modernization. Uh, so cloud, cloud is a huge part of that. But I think really what it comes down to, um, from my perspective, um, is about keeping pace with our adversaries or outpacing our adversaries. And so the cloud enables us to do that with this that's there. Um, being able to at least keep pace or at least find some sort of tactical advantage of some sort. And the cloud really is an enabler of that. So, I mean, in addition to, you know, better collaboration, access to data from wherever you are on the planet, uh, a number of things, you know, cost avoidance or, you know, you know, not spending excessively on the same type of infrastructure over and over again. So there's a number of things uh, that it provides, you know, help in for us in meeting the mission uh, but ultimately, it does come down to, the, you know, being able to, again, keep pace with our adversaries. And in order to, to do that, uh, we've really got to leverage the cloud and then do it in a secure manner, too. Right. So, I mean, security is of the utmost importance to us. And uh, obviously, we're in a very contested environment. A lot of people are, are uh, trying to uh, penetrate our infrastructure and, and, and get a hold of our data and do things to, of that nature. And so this is uh, hugely important to us to use cloud. And, but use it in a secure manner, it's a game changer for us. Yeah, Bob, can you talk about, you know, basically not only kind of your work uh, that you guys are doing uh, on uh, Air Force Cloud One, but just the broader, you know, uh, benefits uh, in terms of, you know, cloud adoption in IT modernization, specifically for 
the DOD as well, right? Because I know that uh, Air Force uh, Cloud One doesn't just offer opportunities at the Air Force, but across the broader DOD. Absolutely, yeah. So as, as Colonel Watson said, um, you know, some of those benefits of the ability to have governance uh, and enterprise-wide governance, as well as narrowly focused governance in specific mission sets is a huge enabler and aspect of cloud. That, that CapEx to OpEx conversion that's kind of been the battle drum of cloud since it uh, you know, came in vogue uh, you know, nearly 15 years ago uh, are certainly uh, paramount and, and cloud's an enabler of. But more so than anything else, I'll say cloud has been the strongest enabler. I'll say cloud and, and uh, the, the rise of containers have been the strongest enablers of really the promises of the Agile Manifesto from 20 plus years ago and some of the, the silo breakdowns that are, are inherent with DevOps and DevSecOps. And, and the reason that is, is how approachable some of the components of cloud are and, and the ability for a cross-functional team to work together off of a, a common set of tools and a single source of truth to get to a software-defined and automated, automated everything approach to your development activity, shifting security left, but then also having that same tool set uh, bridge into your security operations and your, your your site reliability engineering. So the full gamut of the team doesn't have to deal with you know siloed uh, guard gates and guardrails uh, throughout the life cycle and are able to really achieve the velocity needed to, as Colonel Watson put, uh, outpace our adversaries in mission effect. And so you mentioned uh, efficiency and, and as well as Lieutenant Colonel Watson uh, men mentioned uh, efficiency and Cost savings is clearly one of the big advantages of, uh, of cloud. Um, Bob, can you elaborate more on that efficiency and what that provides for the Department of Defense? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and, and with respect to Cloud One specifically, a key that Colonel Watson touched on earlier in gaining efficiency is not repeating, not you know everyone doing the same thing over and over again, but really, and, at, when it comes to cloud, having a secure cloud infrastructure, a secure, secure cloud computing architecture, it, it is a, often a roadblock for uh, DOD and other government agencies for embracing and adopting all the goodness that cloud has to offer. And that's one thing that's unique to cloud one is it's a push button, uh, AWS, Azure and GCP environments that are behind a enterprise secure cloud computing architecture. So instead of you know getting that push button access of that approachable cloud environment and then do, do it yourself, uh, securing and accreditation of that environment. Cloud One offers you the efficiency of hitting the ground running with you know, that same two day turnaround to get a GovCloud account or an Azure Gov subscription or a GCP project. You're not only gaining that, but you're gaining all the baked in guardrails, blanket IATT to get developing, testing and delivering value to your mission day one. And I think that's uh, uh, one of the stronger efficiencies in embracing Cloud One uh, that the DOD is realizing. Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel Watson, from your perspective, uh, where are you guys seeing the, the most efficiency? Well, I think the, what, and, and good on you guys for both bringing James and, and you, Bob, for bringing up the fact that it's not just the Department of the Air Force, it's DOD wide. We got customers inside of Cloud One uh, that are leveraging it, uh, not just within the Air Force and also the Space Force, naturally, too. The Guardians are now a part of this mix. Um, but so to answer the question, um, I really think it comes back, you know, keeping it kind of centered on a mission from my perspective. Um, it allows each of these mission system owners or mission area uh, owners to focus on that specific mission uh, and then allow, you know, Cloud One to address the infrastructure and the platform and all the underpinnings that, that enable that mission set to take place and not worry about that. Let Cloud One worry about the connectivity and the data transport and the security and ingress, egress, uh, making sure that 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 pipeline's available to deploy code on. So letting us worry about that, letting the Bob Ritchies of the world worry about that, let us you know, take that off of those mission systems um, that are deploying into Cloud One um, and focus on their specific mission set that requires their focus there and getting capability to the warfighter uh, at the edge. So there's that. And, and then, you know, it's attacking the problem one time too. So the Air Force was smart in trying to develop a, a shared capability or shared resource in, in Cloud One so that we aren't all trying to crack the same nut over and over and over again. Um, so you don't have everybody out there trying to go off and procure their own cloud and then work their own security for that cloud and, and worry about how they're going to get all the data feeds uh, in those places. And so, so Cloud One has taken care of that uh, for 
all these mission owners. And let me also add too that it's not just business mission system. Sometimes that's you know, uh, people think that it just needs to be something that's you know in the finance realm or something along those lines. But actually, we've got we're seeing the full gamut in here. So we've got um, weapon systems uh, living inside the cloud. One we've got munition systems, logistics systems. You know, I mentioned the finance. There's there's personnel type system. So multiple functional areas are able to reap the benefits that, that you've heard Bob and myself describe. And uh, can you talk a little bit about that, just as a follow-up, how are you um, able to get apps um, to uh, faster authorities of operation or ATOs? Is, how's uh, Cloud One helping to accelerate that? Yeah, so without getting into all the technical details, and I'm not the tech guru here uh, amongst uh, this group, but I, I will tell you that um, Cloud One has already plowed a lot of this ground when it comes down to security controls and the RMF and the, you know people talking about getting their authority to operate. And so it takes a lot of that burden off of there too. So we have up the tech stack, have handled much of that work and taken care of the, the, the foundational pieces of that. So there's quite a bit of what they call inheritance um, that happens with your authorizing officials um, and some reciprocity, if you will, that takes place between authorizing officials that have accredited cloud once. So you get this 60 to 80 percent of these controls already mapped out and taken care of. And you know that you've got peace of mind in what cloud one is providing is, is that foundational infrastructure and the managed services that are there and the security controls. And then as a mission system that you come in and, and now want to ride on top of cloud one or live inside of cloud one, uh, you're living inside of those guardrails. And so there's, there's already, I guess, some buy-in or some assurance uh, with mission partners when they know that they're living inside of that environment now that's been secured and, and contained well, um, that they have a, a fraction of what they would normally have to go after to try and get that authority to operate. So they get quite a bit of what they call inheritance. Gotcha. Gotcha. As you guys have both mentioned uh, a lot of capabilities, uh, certainly uh, I know, you know, one of the uh, factors with Air Force um, Cloud One is to enable, you know, more AI, ML types of technologies. What, what are some of the deciding factors driving app owners and, and leveraging some of these capabilities? Um, Bob, you want to take that one first? Sure. So, um, you know, as uh, we've been discussing, that inheritance is a, a, a major factor in considering moving into cloud one uh, and embracing the cloud in general. Uh, the software defined uh, uh, micro perimeters and zero trust architecture that's present inside cloud one is something that, as, as Colonel Watson mentioned, is directly inheritable by app owners, allowing them to have that uh, kind of granular secure perimeter and getting to cloud fast. You touched on another enabling uh, AI and machine learning, enabling uh, digital twinning, modeling and simulation and digital engineering. These are all components that the cloud offers a unique advantage to as far as its big data compute and store, its high performance computing with, with modeling and simulation. And cloud one is embracing those missions and, and making those available to its tenants. So those are some reasons for mission system owners to go. Uh, I'll also just throw out, you know, the one of the interesting key findings of the DoD swap report from 2019 was that software is developed by people for people. And what, what that really hit on was this thread uh, more at a qualitative level of talented and superlative software engineers and, and uh, security professionals and site reliability engineers want to see their solutions tied and moored to a deeper purpose. And, and that's something that through Cloud One and through the DevSecOps, DevSecOps initiatives, excuse me, uh, within the broader DOD is, is attracting talent to that base. And so from an app owner perspective, tapping into that is, is not only you know, an existential effect on your ability to outpace your adversaries for your mission, but then a continuation of, uh, I guess, continuous modernization moving forward for your mission set, continuous innovation and exploration moving forward to your mission set by attracting that kind of superlative tier talent. Yeah, that makes a, and I am uh, curious, uh, I know we're getting close to time, but, you know, do you have to be a uh, software engineer and, and have, you know, those type of DevSec uh, development skill sets to operate within there? Is it easy for 
mission owners that, you know, might not have the, those technical skill sets to be able to operate in and out of. I, I, I'll throw that out to either one. You, you mentioned it, Bob. So sure, sure. I'll, I'll start on that. I'll, I'll say um, the, the kind of skill sets required for embracing cloud from the ground up is, is a relatively high bar and it's a transformational culture change that the DOD has embraced um, wholeheartedly uh, across and, and you know, the, of course the Air Force spearheading with, with uh, programs like Cloud One and Platform One. Uh, so there is a educational barrier and that's where Cloud One focuses on communities of practice, road shows, workshop sessions, outreach to really help democratize that skill set and knowledge base. But to, to answer more directly as an app owner or a product owner, it's not as much necessary to understand the ins and outs of the cloud environment as, as much as it would be to understand the, I guess, the product mindset and that shift away from project to product um, in order to really start to embrace that mission effect and take advantage of the agile uh, SDLC. Lieutenant Colonel Watson, uh, why don't you bring us home? Uh, to, going back to that last question, um, how are you seeing, you know, uh, Air Force Cloud One allowing for enhanced capabilities uh, and driving more app owners to the cloud? Sure. Yeah. So in, in addition to Bob's comments about the altruistic nature of some of this or what it enables for the warfighter and the coder and the people that are doing the work, um, in addition to the fact that there's a mandate out there, I guess maybe that helps encourage some some uh, mission system owners to uh, migrate to the cloud. But we'd like to think and not hang our hat on that being the reason that people are driving in that direction. Um, I think it really comes down to performance. And I think that the good work that we've been doing on Cloud One, the stuff that you're seeing happen across the Department of Defense in this space, um, people are taking notice. They're seeing the goodness and the benefits of the cloud. And so I think on their own accord, many of them are saying, hey, I want some more of that, or you know, how do we uh, participate in this and, and evolve too? So um, again, I think we're just, the demonstration of a lot of capability, a lot of goodness here uh, is attracting users and different mission system owners. But the three primary reasons that come to mind for me, I'll just, in a nutshell, with all the goodness that's out there, uh, speed is one of them. You know, Bob was talking a little bit about people trying to deploy, you know, getting away from legacy infrastructure and the pace that was there. I think we can deploy a capability a lot faster with this cloud um, infrastructure in place and you know, the likes of Cloud One. Um, added capability that's there. So you guys talked about AI and ML, the machine learning aspect of it. You know, the, the ability for shared workloads, better connectivity, um, better, you know, um, uh, collaboration across the board. There's a lot of goodness and capability that comes with that and that the cloud provides. And then also uh, cost efficiencies, you know, um, taking advantage of the elasticity of the cloud if you wanted to go serverless, um, you, being able to not pay for, you know, the maximum capacity of a server uh, farm or, you know, a data center, you know, we're trying to consolidate or get rid of a lot of the data centers where people are owning and managing all this uh, infrastructure, um, getting rid of that. And that's especially important at a time whenever uh, budgets are, are flat or shrinking, um, we've got to be smart about how we spend our dollars. And so I think uh, the cloud's a huge enabler there. Yeah, I, I don't think that uh, anyone would disagree. I want to, we're, we're at, at the end of our time, but I just want to thank you both uh, for your service. Uh, thank you for the work, all of the hard work uh, that you guys are doing. And, and thank you for taking a little time out today to uh, share that with, uh, with our audience. Again, I want to thank uh, SEIC for underwriting today's conversation uh, and being an elite underwriter of our Roadmap to Modernization series. Um, thank you for joining us and, and hope you'll enjoy the rest of our program.